All right, everyone, we are here at Flink Forward 2025 Asia. I'm super excited to be here with Jarku. Not a new face to the Ravid show. Last year we met in Berlin and we had uh, a lot of insights around data, AI, what's happening in the Flink community. Flus, who is announced, uh, super excited to have you back. Uh, so welcome back to the Ravid show. Thank you, thank you. Nice to meet you again. Yeah, um, just for audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself, tell us more about what you do at Alibaba. Yeah, I'm Jack Wu, and I'm working in Alibaba Cloud. So currently leading a Flink SQL team and the so Flux team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jack, I remember it's almost close to maybe a year now, uh, nearly a year, yeah, where yeah, yeah Flux yeah. was announced. Uh, what progress are you most proud of? Yeah, last year we announced, introduced the uh, Flux and the uh, Flink Forward Boarding, and then. Um, in the uh, 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 in the uh, November yep. at Shanghai at the Flink Forward Asia, yep. we firstly uh, open sourced the uh, uh, Flux uh, live on stage at the uh, Flink Forward Asia, yeah. and uh, yeah, yes, that, that was an amazing moment because the, the venue was in a segment yep. and the, the uh, GitHub star reached to 500 GitHub stars uh, in single one day. Wow. So that is. Uh, yeah. Uh, critical, incredible day for me in yeah. my life. Yeah, and yeah, uh, that's massive. Yeah, and uh, today at Spring Forward Asia uh, 2025, we also uh, proud to announce that uh, Alibaba has already completed the uh, donation for Flux to Apache Software Foundation. So nice. this is another uh, milestone, I think, for for the Flux and the Flux community. Yeah. That's fantastic, and uh, those are definitely good, uh, you know, validation from the community as well. Just in one day, you'll get like 500 GitHub stars when you'll announce. It's massive, and we've been seeing the growth uh, closely as well. Uh, another quick question for you: How has the community responded to Flus so far? Can you share adoption stats and the ecosystem stories as well with our audience? Yeah, I think it's, it's the community is uh, growing very fast because we are continually to invest it. Yep. And uh, yeah, we already currently have uh, more than fifty contributors all from the uh, all across the world. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, such as communists, uh, ByteDance, uh, and uh, uh, Ant Group, and mm. uh, Xiaomi, and uh, eBay, and uh, and uh, yeah, and, and so I, I can't remember all the companies. So many yet. companies, yeah. Yeah, and uh, also the adoption is uh, already in uh, at a large scale uh, at Alibaba's provide uh, in, uh, production environment. Right. And Flux currently already managing um, over three petabytes data size in Alibaba and uh, with a cluster of uh, 40 GB size per second the throughput. So yeah. I, I think it is already a very large scale, uh, but w the number is continuously growing because we are continuous to expand the usage in Alibaba. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I think it is a um, nice uh, start point for, for today and we are looking forward to more uh, contributors and uh, customers to using Flux. Yeah. Love it. Uh, I'm kind of also wanting to know a little bit about uh, how is, um, first of all, what's the next milestone on the roadmap for Flux? If you can share that with our audience. Yeah, because we are uh, just inter entered to the Apache Software Foundation. Hmm. So uh, I think some, uh, the first thing is we want to yeah, graduate from the incubator. And uh, uh, we need to, uh, we are preparing the next release. Uh, so it is the first release in the incubator. Nice. So it is very important to us. And we have um, uh, planned some big things in the next release. Uh, the most excited, it exciting thing is that we are going to support multimodal AI. Yep. Uh, so we, we can support to uh, uh, ingest uh, multimodal data in real time into Flux. Yeah. And store them in a uh, streaming format and also we will to integrate the lens format that's awesome yeah yeah with with, Huge. with Flux. so and then we also will uh, plan to release a python client because uh, we, we we have a good integration with arrow we are using arrow as our underlying format and we nice. will connect with uh, pi, 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 pi arrow mm. so we can connect to uh, a broader uh, eco python ecosystem such as uh, Polas, Pandas, uh, DuckDB, and so on. Nice. So, it, uh, so the next release will be a, a, a new picture of rules to uh, evolving beyond analytics 
into a uh, multi AI. Yeah. yeah, I'm very excited about that. Yeah, that's exciting you. and uh, great announcements there and uh, great uh, you know milestones that are um, uh, happening in the Flus community. I'm kind of um, you know also wanting to know since I talk to a lot of enterprise leaders uh, and a lot of those uh, folks are you know adopting AI and. It's always where the context kind of plays a very important mm -hmm. role. So I'm wanting to know from you, how is Flu's changing the game of real-time analytics in the context of AI workloads? Uh, if you can share a little bit about that, uh, Jack. Yeah, I, I think in the AI era, um, the real-time, there are some two, maybe some two um, major challenges for the real-time analytics. The first is the how to do the real-time feature engineering yep. and how to process the uh, multimodal data. Because, um, you know, uh, AI model is trained on features and mm. the real-time AI model is trained in requires the real-time features. Uh, right. Some yeah, recommendation systems rely on the, the, the uh, real-time feature engineering, especially for uh, TikTok. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the recommendation system is very awesome. And, uh, yeah, uh, since that, that also... Um, um, shows a great uh, challenge to the current uh, real-time analytics because mm. there are some challenges unresolved. But I think through some, some key features, some key functionality in Fruits, such as the uh, uh, partial update, uh, schema evolution, and, uh, uh, and some, uh, yeah, some KV lookups, uh, they, they will help the uh, real-time feature engineering a lot. Mm. to help them to do feature easier, such as adding features or update the features. And uh, another thing is yeah, multi-modal multi data because yeah, analytics works on structured data, but yes. AI works on unstructured, unstructured data. Unstructured data. Uh, yeah. Multi-modal data, such yeah. as text, model, ADO. Uh, so I think the multi-modal data will become more and more important for, uh, for the AI and uh, data infra and for the real-time analytics. So I think we what we uh, flows in the next release of flows we are in we are involving ourselves to support better for the multi-data, uh, multi-modal data, and I think that will help a lot for uh, uh, for the multi-modal data processing. And especially we are going to uh, release a Python client. Nice. Uh, so the data scientists can use Python to do some real-time analytics. Yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, these are great insights. And uh, thanks for uh, sharing these points with us when it comes to real-time analytics as well. Yeah. Um, also, I saw the fun surfing water logo. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was actually fun and memorable. But I'm kind of curious to know what inspired uh, and what's the story behind it? Uh, actually, we, we, we put a lot of effort to design the, the logo of Fruits. Um, actually, in our mind, that we want to convey the values of, uh, of Fruits that uh, including uh, friendly, uh, adaptive, and, uh, the, and the fluid. Yeah. It is our streaming storage. So we, we, we choose Alter uh, as our... Actually, when we created the Fruits project since two years ago, I already have decided to use the altar mm -hmm. as the main, ob main element of the logo. Uh, so because altar um, ma uh, perfect matches what we need, the friendly, the adaptive, yep. and the fluid. Um, <coughs> and, uh, and, uh, yeah, and then we, 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 but the final element you can see, in, um, we adding the serving element in it. Uh, that is inspired by the uh, ChatGPT. We use ChatGPT to, to generate some images. Yep. And we got inspired from it to start to adding the surfing element to make the, yep. uh, the logo looks like more uh, to, to present the speed of fruits, the, the fluid of yeah. speed, uh, so, 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 so fruit of uh, fruits. So that's what you can see now, a serving author. And I think it, uh, it, it's just like, um, Invitation from the author to yeah to 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 everyone to to ride the wave of real time data together. So wow. I really like his uh, uh, author and uh, thanks to the design team. <laughs> <laughs> They've done a fantastic yeah, job yeah, yeah. in yes. uh, definitely a lot of thought process that went uh, behind the logo as well, and you all have come 
across and it looks super fun so well done on that um, uh, also I'm kind of wanting to know and this is more from a community perspective the questions kind of coming together is how do you see Flink and Flows uh, evolving together for next gen analytics pipelines if you can share any thoughts around that uh, uh, I think Mm, I think there are two major trends in the big data ecosystems. The first thing is the uh, storage computer separation, mm. but the second thing is the storage computation, uh, computation integrated to optimization. They should to integrate together to optimize for user workload. Uh, for example, uh, Iceberg is built for uh, Spark. Right. So Fruits is built for Flink, and I'm brief that. Uh, in the near future, uh, Fruits will become the de facto standard streaming storage for Flink, Love just it. like how Iceberg currently, uh, yeah, uh, works for the batch work batch workload. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and also you can see that we have delivered many exciting uh, features uh, in Fruits, especially for 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 the analytical uh, workload for Flink, such as the yep. uh, streaming. Uh, streaming column pruning, streaming partition pruning, and the delta join to replace the streaming join. Uh, all these things we are doing is to yeah, better to resolve the long-term uh, pain point in, in Flink. So we want to deliver a better uh, integrated uh, experience for Flink and the and the fruits. Uh, for the streaming analytics. Yeah. yeah, and what would be your um advice for those developers who are wanting to try flus for the first time any thoughts uh, what should they be aware of what should they be looking forward to what sort of speed and scalability they should be excited for anything that you would like to share yeah I think um, in, I think I want to convey the messages to to same that uh, if you are uh, if you are using Frink and looking for a, a good storage for uh, to work with Flink, so try Flux. Yeah. Uh, if you are building a lake house, and if you want to make the lake house to be more real time, because Iceberg currently can work on yeah ten minutes, I think. Uh, so you can try Flux. Okay. And, uh, yeah. If you want to uh, build real time feature engineering, try try Flux. Hmm. Okay, that's very interesting, and uh, those are great insights. Uh, Jark, one last question I have for our audience is, if folks want to reach out to you, learn more about the different things that you all are publishing, uh, but in general as well, connect with you. Is LinkedIn the best place to connect? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. LinkedIn, LinkedIn the, and GitHub. <laughs> GitHub, for sure, yeah, <laughs> yes. because most of the contributions and yeah, all the work yeah, kind of goes um, into it. So thanks for doing this, but uh, we'll keep the conversation going. It's always good to see you, Jark, and uh, yeah. thanks for all the amazing insights, and thanks for all the great work that you do for the community. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, and uh, looking forward to meet you Again, next time. in Barcelona, right? In Barcelona. <laughs> right, yeah. all right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. That's yeah, Jack for you.